Um, hi, I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about like East Coast scenes, right? Because maybe a lot of people don't want to or can't pick up and move to LA as much right. as they want to. So what do you see are maybe like strong areas on the East Coast for aspiring producers or beat makers? Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Atlanta. And that, you know, that's, that's changed so many, that's changed over the years because, you know, if you had asked me this in 1993, I would say New York. But now, Atlanta is the place that has become the hub of music. Um, if it's just the general, it's the general idea of making music, not necessarily hip hop music, I would also say now Nashville. Um, <coughs> Tennessee has a, a thriving music scene right about now. You know, a lot of us when we hear Nashville, we say, "Oh, it's country." You know, it's all types of music at this point. Have a budding music scene. I think Jill Scott recorded her last album in Nashville, Tennessee. So. Those are the two places I would say that you need to, once again, go to just to get in the scene of being always around um, different musicians. Just like if you were a tech person, your number one place to move would be Silicon Valley, right? Because you might not have a, you might have a small tech company started, you might have a great idea, but you need to be around that. At least the energy of it. So the, the energy you're talking about is now is either in Nashville, Tennessee, or Atlanta, Georgia. Problem is, some people will think Atlanta, Georgia is too saturated at this particular point. Um, and there's a lot going on, but those are the two places right now. New York, New York for media, I would say if you want to get in the media or the journalist, journalism side of hip hop or any type of music, New York City, but as far as the uh, creation of it and the energy, it would be Nashville or not. Follow up on that. How about Austin? Um, Texas? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't really consider that East Coast. Oh, so, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, definitely Austin. You know, because you now Austin, along with Raleigh, Durham, and Charlotte, is the fastest growing cities in the United States. Um, um, so definitely Austin, especially now since the influx of South by Southwest, like even if you want to just decide just to move to Austin to work with the company South by Southwest conglomerate, that is the perfect place to get your foot in, just to work doing that. And then just one other follow up, uh, you're, you're in Germany now, right? Probably. Uh, so you've had, you weren't in one of those. Well, I think the way it worked for me, it worked for Little Brother at the time, although we didn't live anywhere else, the label we signed to was in San Francisco, California. And so, we always talk about that our first major fan base is in California. Right? If you've ever been to California, a country all on its own, just a sheer population. So us, you know, us having going to Oakland, getting on ABB Records. Now we're introduced to a whole different <coughs> fan base that we might have not seen. But but the wonderful thing about Little Brother was we were one of the first groups to like thrive off the internet before the internet internet got populated, right? Um, you know. <coughs> We were on, we left, well, we were on ABB, and we also, ABB got signed to Atlanta to distribute our record. And, you know, it's funny, I had a meeting recently with uh, Julie Greenwald, who is uh, the CEO, CEO of uh, Atlantic Records. Her and Craig Kaufman, they both run it together. But we were, I was up there this time, it was like a year ago, but two years ago, I was up there this time talking about Rhapsody, and, you know, the, the idea of her coming gentleman coming to Atlanta. And so the first thing I did was, you know, I talked to her about our time at Atlanta, Little Brother's time in Atlanta. And we didn't have a, a bad time in Atlanta. You know, we had a, a it was a wonderful experience to me. I learned a lot. But one thing she told me was she said, um, you know, my little brother was before their time. I said, well, how do you mean? She's like, well, we weren't prepared for you guys. Because you guys had a 
a fan base we couldn't put in the numbers, right? She said, when you guys came to Atlantic, we had one internet person for digital marketing, for, for uh, metadata, all of this stuff that we know now when it comes to looking up the internet, and, you know, in the fan base, they exist in 2005. She said, we had one person. She said, now we have 107. Right? That lets you know the difference. So by the time we got on the net, we were able to travel faster because there wasn't a lot of us. Like really dealing with a fan base that we really couldn't see. So that's how we were able to stay in North Carolina, which worked out so many ways for us as far as our peace, real estate, <laughs> and so many other uh, reasons, man. You know what I mean? That we didn't have to, I never have to live, never had to live anywhere else. 